What? What? How are you today? Good. How are you today? Good. Good. How are you today? Good. Can you count to 14? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen. Would you do that again, 13, please? Thirteen, seventeen, fourteen. Okay, one more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen. Thirteen, seventeen, fourteen. The only thing he did wrong. Thirteen, seventeen, fourteen. Thirteen, seventeen. Can you count to fourteen? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Oh, I passed it. Okay, Link, one more time. Fourteen. Fourteen. One, two, three, four, five, hey, six, uh, hey, count slow. One, two, three, four, okay. five, six. Go, Link, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, seventeen. No, 14. it's thirteen. <laughs> hey, say thirteen, fourteen. 13, 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, now count to 17. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 17. 13, 17. Good job, Lee. No, well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the ranch. I'm Dr. Lee, and it is as you can see, another beautiful day in South Texas, about 82 degrees, sunshiny day, winds blowing, it's nice and cool out here. It's just absolutely perfect. What they call a Chamber of Commerce day, right? Right. I hope the weather's good where you are, and I hope the world's treating you well, and I hope coronavirus has no clue where you are. And it looks like we're about to get uh, released back on society again, at least 25% at a time and maybe 50% within a couple of weeks. So uh, I would encourage you to keep your safety things going. You know what they are. I don't even have to tell you about that. We're all sick and tired of hearing them. But anyway, uh, things are looking a little bit more promising. So that that is good. Uh, today's video is a totally ridiculous video. It reminds me of some of my earlier videos that were just totally totally all over the map and uh, you know I've made 130 140 videos and YouTube says there's one thing that you should do and if you don't do it you're not going to have a suggest uh, you're not going to have a successful channel and that is to always maintain one central theme your channel should wrap itself around one central theme well that's the last thing my videos do is they don't even you know, no, no two of my videos are anything alike. They're all weird. They're all crazy. And even within the videos, the, there's commonly not a central theme. And this video today, folks, I am sorry to say, is all over the place. Like I said, it's just like some of my early videos where you, you get to the end and you go, what, what the heck was that all about? But anyway, um, this is one of those that just, I had a bunch of parts and I thought I'd throw it together. And um, there's one other thing that that YouTube says, don't do it or your channel will die. You'll It'll be cut in half the first time you mention politics or religion. Well, today's video has four parts and uh, they are loosely tied to religion. And this is not one of my soapbox preachy preachy videos guys so you don't have to hit hit delete and uh, and head off to go watch demolition ranch or anything like that yet uh, you be the judge but I'd beg you to hang with me for a minute because it's going to be very very loose just kind of little uh, hints toward religion every now and then if you know what I mean for example I'll go ahead and start number one right now part number one who do you think this is in this picture 
Well, uh, who knows? Uh, most people would think it's supposed to be Jesus, but nobody knows what Jesus looks like. None of us have ever seen him. And um, what this is, more than likely, is some artist's rendition or what they feel Jesus probably looks like. But how would they know? Anyway, it was good enough to get my Uncle Floyd to pay hard-earned money for it and hang it on the wall. He and his wife were out shopping one day and they bought it. And you know, Uncle Floyd, he was, one of his mottos was dare to be different. You know, he dressed ostentatiously, flamboyantly all his life. He wore wild clothes, multicolored cowboy boots, and just, he was the typical drugstore cowboy. And uh, so it was not at all surprising that Uncle Floyd would have a picture of Jesus on the wall that looked like this instead of the classic Jesus pictures that we're used to seeing and have for our, our entire lives. But uh, uh, see, that's what I'm talking about. This I'm already rambling and I'm just into the first story. But, but nevertheless, I was setting the stage because of an event that happened and, and people would come over to Floyd. And Floyd said, hey, he said, Lee, what do you think about this picture of Jesus? And I said, well, oh, it's just great, Floyd. It's very inspiring. I love it. And, you know, honestly, people either hated it or they loved it. And most people told Floyd they loved it and later they'd tell me, that's the weirdest looking thing ever. So I don't know, some of you might really like it and I hope I'm not hurting your feelings uh, by saying that I, I didn't care much for it. Uh, to me, the expression on his face reminded me of the first time that I was at Walmart and the clerk told me that my credit card had been denied. Um, or maybe the time, you know, it, 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 it looks like maybe he just picked up the phone and it was the Internal Revenue Service. You know, it, it's it, the expression's just not what I would uh, expect to have on the wall on Jesus' face. But nevertheless, see, rambling again. Nevertheless, um, this story, I, I, I drove over to Floyd's house one day and there was an air conditioning van, uh, air conditioning repair service that was out in Floyd's driveway, a van out there, and I went in through the through the um, garage and into his kitchen that way. And as I was going into the garage, uh, the AC guy was coming out. He was leaving. He had just, he'd finished his job and he was headed out. And he goes, is that your dad in there? And I said, no, nah, it's my uncle. And he goes, well, he's a great guy, isn't he? And I said, yeah, everybody loves Floyd. And he said, he's funny too, isn't he? And I said, yeah, he's got a remarkably uh, quick wit and a funny sense of humor, especially to be, you know, over a hundred years old. And he goes, yeah, I just love that old guy. And I said, yeah, well, thanks. I, we all love Floyd. And, I went, into, went on in the house and Floyd was in there and he just had tears pouring down his face. And I looked at him and I thought, oh my gosh, what's, what's wrong with Floyd? And I said, Floyd? And then I realized he was laughing. And I said, uh, you know, I gave him enough time to collect himself. You know how it is sometimes when something hits you, just that, that one right way and you start laughing and you can't quit. Well, that's where Floyd was. And uh, when he finally was able to collect himself a bit, I said, what, what is so funny? And he said, that AC guy, he said, uh, he said, and Floyd had that picture of Jesus right there by the door as you went out. He, he said, he was walking out and he looked at my picture and he turned back at me and he said, hey, that's a great picture of Kenny Rogers. I like it. <laughs> and Floyd couldn't even answer after that. He just started laughing and, and, you know, like I said, by the time I got in there, he was still crying. So I, and I, I, I kind of agree with Floyd. I started laughing when Floyd told me that. And, you know, I mean, if you look at the current, well, I know, bless his heart, you know, rest in peace, Kenny, he died, <clears throat> died a couple of months ago, but even the elder Kenny nor the younger Kenny, I don't, I don't see it. I don't get it. But uh, anyway, okay. That was story number one. And you see how stupid it is. The rest of them aren't any better than that. Well, yeah, one of them's a lot better than that, but Okay, uh, religious story number two. Um, right after Mark got his diagnosis, um, all, of, all of you guys, all my subs were sending us nice things, you know, cards and letters and, and all those things, just telling us that y'all were with us and praying for us and such. And one day my wife came in from the post office and she had this box about the size of a shoe box. And uh, 
uh, she was shaking it and she said, man, this is heavy. And I said, well, what is it? And she goes, I don't know, it's for you. She said, it feels like a box of bullets, a box of cartridges. And I said, God, nobody would send that through the mail. And uh, so I, I got the box and I opened it up and inside the, I, I can't tell you, like I said, it was about the size of a, a lady's shoe box. It was chock full of these little metal crosses about this big and I don't know how I couldn't possibly count them. There were hundreds of them in there, enough to fill up the box. And uh, there was a nice letter with it from a uh, one of our viewers, one of our subs in another state, and sent it to us and was telling us, you know, uh, uh, how how he was had been praying for us and that he hoped that we could find place for all these little crosses. And I thought, well, what a nice thing. And then I thought, but well, what the heck am I going to do with them? And uh, so next Sunday, I took a couple of handfuls to church, just kind of laid them around here and there. And I did that a couple of times after that. Nobody ever said a word. The preacher never mentioned it. Nobody said, whoever's putting this junk out on the tables, quit doing it. Or, or man, what a, what a wonderful thing somebody's doing. They, ne they never said anything. So I thought, well, that, that wasn't very appreciated. I, I didn't get a warm fuzzy from that. So. Um, about this time, Mark and I were starting to go to MD Anderson a lot. I drove him most of the trips to MD Anderson, Anderson I was with him. And uh, so I thought, well, I'll just see if I can find a place, you know, where somebody might want them there. So what I started doing is I would take a handful of these crosses, put them in my pockets when I left the apartment every day. And we'd go down there and I'd put three or four here, three or four there. and. Uh, week after week after week it got to where I was carrying two or three pockets full of these things and I was putting 15 or 20 here and 15 or 20 there and I'd walk back through those places a few hours later and they'd all be gone and I would leave them and that hospital's huge I mean it's like from the start to finish it's like a quarter of a mile and then straight up for you know 12 13 stories it's monstrous and it even hooks onto other buildings and meanders through them so everywhere I went all over that place for months, I took those little crosses and distributed them. And this is a bit cheesy, a bit sleazeball thing for me to do, but I did it. Um, there are other religions, uh, worship rooms all throughout those hospitals. And it may have happened or it may have not have happened, but sometimes when I was walking past one of the doors to go into these other religions, there, there may have been 20 or 30 of those crosses slip out of my pocket and get spilled all over the floor. Not saying it happened, I'm just saying it could have happened. And yes, I do know how sorry that is and how cheesy that is. Okay, see, I told you this is a ridiculous video. Okay, part number three. And uh, all of you guys, majority of you know who John Prine is. And you also know, like Kenny Rogers, he passed away uh, recently. Uh, he had uh, lung cancer and then he got coronavirus on top of that. So uh, he was one of those super high risk people and uh, a brilliant man, a great guitarist, a gifted poet and a gifted songwriter. And the band and I were really, really wanting to do a tribute to John Prime because we play a lot of his music. And uh, we thought about doing the Zoom thing and getting together and uh, on Zoom and recording, but there's time lags on Zoom. And if you don't have a super fast computer to link all these entities together, the lags make it almost impossible to do music together from different locations. So, and we haven't been able to get together to do anything yet either. So um, I went back and looked through all my recordings of things and, and I had a whole lot of bits and pieces from our jam room where we've done John Prine songs and such, but they were very haphazard and very poor quality. And I did find one John Prine song that we did and it is religious. So it fits in. It has something to do with an angel. So that a lot of you guys already know where we're going with this. But anyway, I did do a recording. We did do a recording one time and uh, we were in the truck 
going down the highway, had our instruments with us. I don't remember where we were going, but um, it may have been the Luchenbach trip. I don't know. We were going to play somewhere, and uh, we were just recording stuff and playing as we were going. So um, I just wanted to put that in uh, as, uh, as a tribute to John Prine. It is, it is not our greatest recording, but it is one of our favorite songs, and uh, he was one of our favorite guys. So, John Prine, God bless you. Rest in peace. This is for you. We need to pick a smoother I road next time. Yeah. Or a smoother driver. <laughs> I'm doing my best.
back, I was singing back there, and you were hitting some bumps, uh-huh. and I was my having brado. a hard time getting that Natural vibrato vibrado. until we hit those bumps. <laughs> 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 Maybe an angel. Know. It all came. <laughs> are these cops up here? Okay. I don't know. Oh, yeah. But those are cows over there. These are not electronic media devices, officer. Right? He's like, how many radar detectors do y'all need? There's seven. We're taking a. With this driver, you don't need any. <laughs> oh, get on the other side of the street. Wrong way, driver. Move over. <laughs> Goodness. Did, did I tell y'all we almost got a, on Christmas Day, we almost got hit by the wrong way driver head on. We're coming out of Kerrville, and there was one on the interstate on the wrong side of the road. Oh. Old man in a pickup. Oh, that's so scary. I know. It might be that guy in it. Could Are be. you sure he just wasn't playing chicken with you? I don't know. <laughs> I, he won. <laughs> Well, guys, I hope you like that. Um, I know the banter between the uh, band members is always ridiculously crazy, uh, but I do hope you like the song, and I do hope you appreciate the reason behind it to pay uh, pay tribute to our old buddy John Prine, and um, we will we will certainly miss him. All right, part number four, the one you've been waiting for, so you can get back to your life. I had a voicemail recently and uh, from a number I did not recognize and you guys know how that is. So I played the message back and lo and behold, it was from the pastor from a church in which I was raised and I hadn't seen this guy in over 50 years. And um, he had run into my sister. Uh, She works at a physical therapy clinic in our hometown. And he was over in our old hometown again, ran into my sister and she gave him my phone number. So uh, he he gave me a call and and it had been, I don't think I had seen him since 1968 or 1969. I don't remember the last time I saw him, but uh, you know, I saw his name on there and I thought, my gosh, it's been over 50 years. I'll call him back, but we have nothing in common anymore. What in the world will we talk about? But um, he, he was the guy, he baptized me in 1964. And I started doing, after I talked to him on the phone, he said he was 83 years old and still working. Kind of an Uncle Floyd kind of guy. 83 years old. And I started doing the math and I thought, because I remembered when he baptized me, he was kind of an older guy. And like I said, I did the math and uh, yeah, he was older. He was 27 years old. Uh, I was 11, and uh, but I remember him. He was always uh, uh, a, a very, very kind man. He had that kindness thing that we talk about. He had that going for him all the time. He, he just he was just a happy person. And uh, I remember one day he was walking through the church, and my dad and I were in the church, and we were working on something. And uh, my daddy just started laughing, and I said, Dad, what are you laughing at? And he said, did you hear what Howard was whistling? That's our preacher, Howard Howard Walker. And I said, no. And he said, he was whistling a beer commercial. And, and you know, that was back in the days when alcohol was taboo and you know, you know how that was back then, back in the early, early 60s. And, and uh, but, but here, here is what Howard was whistling as he came through the church. When you wrote on Schlitz, not a chance. You wrote a beer, real gusto in the great light beer. But uh, anyway, that was Howard. He was always happy. He, I just remember him being a, a wonderful man that we all loved. The whole church loved him. And he stayed in our area for uh, you know several years. And then he moved in 69, I believe, to a neighboring town. And he is still in that neighboring town today. They celebrated his 50th year of being in the church and in the town. And uh, he's one of those guys where you don't just have to belong to his church for him to want to take care of you and help you out. He, he's, he is a, a, a friend of the world, and he was always that way, and he's still that way today. His town got together, and they had a great big party, a big celebration of his 50th year there last year. And uh, here's some of the highlights from that. I see a lot of water under a bridge. A lot of things coming and going during this time, but it uh, doesn't seem 50 years. 
he's probably impacted more people's lives than any other person in this town or county. It doesn't matter what church you go to. If you're sick, need help, he's in there, you know, taking care of you. Whether you're in Dallas Hospital, Wichita Falls, it doesn't matter. He's always there. People of Clay County and beyond, as a school teacher and as reverend of First Christian Church. He has been there. Not only as a mentor, but also a friend. Walker has been there every step of the way. He, he married my wife and I. Uh, both my boys were married by him, so he's you know, just part of the family. Fifty years later, he can look back on the impact he's made. You know, I've seen a lot of people succeed, so that's all that I've tried to do is be a mentor, uh, an encourager. So, do what I can. So anyway, I called Mr. Walker back, and uh, he answered the phone, and his voice sounded so much like it did 50 years ago, 60 years ago, and, and uh, it, we really had a good conversation. And, and like I said, you know, I, I thought, Howard and I don't have anything in common anymore. This will probably be a very short conversation. Well, we ended it after 30 minutes, and uh, honestly, I think we could have talked another hour, but uh, it was really, really uh, a good time talking to him and he's uh, he watches this channel so uh, so howdy Howard I, I hope hope you're enjoying this story and I hope my lies don't get too big but uh, uh, he's a he's a subscriber to our channel so he's he's one of us now and and has been for some time he had watched a lot of the videos and and he liked what he saw and uh, he said that he watched me uh, watched me and Mark and Matt get baptized together and I said yeah and he said that was a special day was it not and I said it certainly was and, and uh, I said well do you remember that you baptized me and I don't remember if he said yes or no and I, I said something about uh, um, he, he asked me why I got baptized again and I, I said well to borrow one of your phrases there's been a lot of water under the bridge since I was 11 years old. And uh, he kind of chuckled and then he said, oh, I guess I didn't hold you under long enough. <laughs> but, but not only is he a super kind guy, he's got a great sense of humor. Uh, another interesting thing about him, I remember him being a mathematician. He was really good at math. And uh, our principal, our superintendent, I'm sorry, came to the church one day and asked Howard, he said, Howard, we need a, a math teacher to finish out the semester. We've had a, a, a person that had to leave. Can you help us out? And, and Howard, being the kind guy, said, well, sure I can. So he went and he finished that semester out. And then he finished out over another 40 years of teaching math. He, he finished there at our town and when he moved to the other town, he taught math there too. So not only was he a preacher, he was a teacher. But uh, like he said, he just tried to mentor people. He tried to be there for them. And he tried to, he tried to help them reach their potential. He tried to be positive and encouraging. And his town celebrated his 50 years with a huge turnout. And you know, they, they all came and just told him they appreciated him. And you know, he did not make one big splash and then he was famous for that forever. He was famous for doing what God put us here to do, and that is for taking care of one another. We talk about kindness a lot on this channel, and Mr. Walker, Reverend Walker, man, he is the epitome of kindness. If you ever wanted to model yourself after one person, he would be the guy that I would recommend. So think about that. I read the other day, I was telling my wife yesterday, I read, read something the other day that said, kindness is the one thing that a blind man can see and a deaf man can hear. You have to kind of think about that a little bit, but uh, it's so very, very true. Kindness goes such a long way. All right, see, it wasn't too preachy, was it? It wasn't too bad, was it? All right. Well, guys, that is about it from out here on the ranch. Um, Everything's kind of cruising along like uh, it should. We're, you know, we have highs and lows like everyone that's been through tough situations has. And, uh, but overall, we're all doing pretty good. I thank you for all the cards, all the letters, all the little gifts you've sent the children. And uh, just, just for your concern and for your love. Thank you so very, very much. Will you guys take care? Be safe. 
Stay safe as you can and a little bit more. You guys always remember I love you. I look forward to seeing you back here next time. Take care and we will see you soon. Bye bye now. So what you doing there, Al? Neutering dog, Dad. All right. Who's gonna learn you? That's a mistake.